right guys, let's unbox some Surgex today, starting with the SA1810. This is an out of the rack style unit and it features Surgex's patented surge elimination and conditioning technology. So not a surge protector, a surge eliminator. It has 10 outlets, so it'll provide power and protection to all of the gear that you need it to. To read from the specs page, it'll eliminate surge energy up to 6,000 volts without producing harmful ground contamination or common mode disturbances that can cause hissing sounds and pixelation on AV systems to ensure pristine sound and video. It's also compact, so it'll tuck nicely and fit seamlessly into your space. I personally use this specific unit behind my desk to protect my equipment while I'm making these videos for you guys. In the box, we have our rubber feet, which we will add to the unit here in just a moment. We have our installation instructions, and on the back we have our LED indicator chart, which will help you quickly and easily through diagnostics should the need ever arise. And last, we have our warning sheet. Let's install those feet real quick, flip it over, and pull in real close. Here it is, your Surgex SA1810. Next, we have the Surgex XR315. Now, real quick, before we go any further, I wanna give Surgex props on this packing. It's a molded fitting on all of these units so that they're not bouncing around in the box and it's super well protected during shipping. Similar to the earlier discussed 1810, the XR315 features Surgex's patented surge elimination and conditioning technology to give you that excellent protection for all of your equipment. And to read again from the specs page, it eliminates surge energy up to 6,000 volts without producing harmful ground contamination or common mode disturbances that can cause hissing sounds and pixelation on AV systems. Now, as for what's in the box, you see feet as well as rack ears are included, so you can easily mount this unit anywhere. I use it with feet and have it installed on my table, providing protection for my amps, processors, and other AV systems. Next, we have our seven pin plug-in Phoenix terminal block for your remote connections. And here we have all of the hardware to install this unit, whether you go with rack mount ears or you go with the feet. Now let's clear off the top and here is a look at the rear. And here's the front. This was your Surgex XR315. And here are the two units we've discussed today side by side. This is the Surgex SA1810 and the Surgex XR315. All right, guys, now let's talk about some of our favorite cables. The SVS sound path cables are awesome for tons of use case scenarios. Whether you're looking for a subwoofer cable or bananas to use with your system, these cables will fit the bill. They come in several different lengths for whatever needs you may have. They're super sturdy and have a clean aesthetic as well. Here are a couple of one meter RCA cables. I like to use these shorties on the runs where the processor and sub are super close. I try to match the length needed to the actual cable length as this makes for less cable hiding and less cable management altogether. You can see the braided exterior here and it feels super hardy and resilient. What you can't see though are the layers underneath. I'll throw a graphic up here to show you the internals. I would cut it up and show you this, but it's a brand new cable, so I think I'm gonna use it instead. Next, let's look at some speaker wire. These are all bananas as that's what I use since we switch out our system so much over here. That said, these also come in spades or combo spade and banana plugs. If you aren't moving your system or constantly changing things out like we do here, I would tend to lean more toward and recommend the spades as it's more of a set and forget type option. These are 15 and 10 footers, which will primarily be used for long runs to the front of house, which is opposite of my amp. I may also need these longer ones for my opposite rear and side surrounds. I plan to do an in-wall and under-floor wall plate install with bare wire connections later, but I like bananas for swapping in and out since we change our system so much here. Finally, I have the four-footers. These are great for patches or use once wall plates are installed to go directly into the speakers that are right next to them. All in all, the SVS sound path cables are an excellent solution for virtually any length as well as any different type of cable needs. In addition to the bananas, spades, and RCAs we've discussed here, bare wire, HDMI, XLR, and optical cables are also available with all of the same advantages we've discussed here. All right, today I wanna to talk to you about installing wall plates in your home theater. Here are some basic components. This is your bracket, which is an existing construction type bracket so you can install anywhere in the drywall. No studs needed. Here's your faceplate cover to pretty things up when you're done. And here are the terminals. 
You'll want to use bare wire or spade connections on the back here and clamp down super tight so that nothing comes loose inside of your walls. As you can see, these are marked for a 7.2 system and the labels make it super easy to identify while installing and while using later. I'm also installing an HDMI patch here. There are tons of uses for this, but for me specifically here and now, it's so that I can patch into multiple desks in the office area and connect my computers to the projector in the theater area. Conceptually, these are a very simple solution. It's a basic barrel connection, but it helps clean things up a bit, especially when you plan on moving things around a lot like we do here. Here's a single speaker plate. I'll be using these guys for the surround channels. And here is a three speaker plate. I'll be using this for the LCR up front. Now this three plate for LCR may seem strange because usually your LCRs are gonna be spread apart quite a bit. And I would typically recommend putting a single set for each speaker. But when we use the switcher for some of our tests, the amp needs to come to the switcher before it goes to the speaker. So having an LCR in one location makes the most sense for my particular purposes. For you guys, it may be completely different. I won't show you the install of these as the install will be identical to this main unit, so there's no point in doing so. But I wanted to show you the other parts that we'll be using. All right, now let's move on to installing your bracket. Now how these post construction brackets work is these arms swivel as you screw. They swing out and the screw gets tighter. They grab the backside of your drywall and holds on tight. Now as you can see the brackets are a little bit wonky to get a really good trace on. Some come with stencils but this one did not. As such I'm going to trace the outer perimeter then draw a line roughly a quarter to a half inch in from there all the way around. The outer line tells me where the outer lip will rest so we want to make sure not to cut outside of there. Now, when talking about cutting it out, you have several options available. You might already have a box cutter lying around, which will work, but it will take a while. You could use a drywall knife, which is kind of designed to do this type of deal and is a great option, or you could use power tools such as this RotoZip. I've also used vibrating multi-tools for these, but the RotoZip is probably my favorite as I can set the depth and cut out just about any size or shape needed. Now, once you're all set, you can cut out your hole, then check your fitment. I've got a bit in this corner, so I'll use the blade on my box cutter to trim out just a bit so that it fits perfectly. Once you're nice and snug, you'll screw in the screws and the arms will flip up and your bracket will be nice and secure. Since this is an attic type space and the back is lit, you can actually see what's happening as I screw. The arm spins, grabs the back of the drywall and pulls it in snug. Now check to make sure everything's nice and tight and it's time to pull through some wires. Now, I'm not gonna demo pulling wires through the walls as that'll have to be a separate video all of its own. With the type of space this is, it's just a matter of climbing through the trusses and putting the wires where they need to go. In some cases where you have insulation or other obstacles in the way, it will not be this simple. So I'll get to a video on those obstacles at a later date if we have enough requests. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Now when attaching here, you'll want to make certain that you know which speaker connection is which before attaching, and also you may want to run tests before tightening or putting on your cover plate. Here we place the wire in, screw it in tight and clamp down just like any other terminal, then screw the plate into the panel. Rinse and repeat running wires connecting and screwing for the next set, then for the HDMI cables it's as simple as plugging in. I'm only using one here to go to the projector as I don't have the other ends connected, but this gives you an idea of how it connects and how easy it is to connect this portion. I will also make note that they do make 90 degree angles for these if you have spatial constraints behind or need to go straight down or straight up, that could help you immensely. Finally, grab your wall plate, screw it into place, and you are good to go. Here's the front, and here's a shot of how these look completed from the rear installed. I hope all these videos helped guys. If you have any questions or requests for future videos, please let me know in the comments. If you'd like to purchase Surgex gear, SVS gear, or anything home theater related, I'll post a link in the description to the Baduka home theater website and you can buy directly from there. Or you can reach out to Corey on the Clipsh Owners Facebook group and he'll be happy to assist. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you again next week for another episode of PHT TV.